Dr. Alex Eingorn. Uh, I'm a chiropractor, and I practice in Manhattan, uh, New York, for the last 25 or well, 28 years, really, but 25 years in the same location. And uh, I'm really glad to see you all because back about 12 years ago, you know, I realized that I may have been a little bit crazy to get into skin art therapy. It was one of those flukes, but it's nice to see other crazy people here. Thank you. <laughs> so, a um, couple of questions. Uh, how many of you are medical doctors? And, and can you maybe show of hands? And uh, the other people are uh, allied health providers, like alternative health practitioners. Yeah? Okay. And how many of you own at least one or more skinners? Excellent. All right, so uh, let me just boot this presentation up, and we will... Uh, Move on, if I can find it. There we go. Uh, so I was invited to talk to you today, not so much about skin art technology per se, but just to share my experience uh, with skin art in my uh, private practice and my personal life for the last uh, you know, 12 years. So I want to start this presentation by quoting Dr. Albert Schweitzer, who was one of my favorite doctors. Uh, if those of you who are not familiar with his work, he won the uh, Nobel Prize for uh, studying indigenous medicine in 1952. And he said that every person carries within him an inner doctor. And we're at our best. Oh, do I, should I translate to Russian as well? So let me just finish the quote and then we'll sort this out. So we're at our best when we get this inner doctor to get back to work. So I find that to be very inspiring. So uh, getting back to your question, does anyone need translation into Russian or any other language? Hmm? Ah, да. Кому кому по русски нужно? Perhaps in that case, maybe we can group uh, those people that need translation and into uh, Russian to like one area, and then uh, somebody can uh, do a simulcast. Uh, otherwise, it'll take me twice as long because I'll have to repeat myself in Russian. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, so, значит, давайте мы соберем русскую группу в одном, так сказать, и вы просто будете переводить им там, потому что иначе это займет просто вдвое больше времени. Кому нужен перевод на русский язык? Руки поднимите, кому нужен на русский перевод. Кому, кому перевод нужен на русский? Можно это самое? Oh, so let's let's get them all somewhere together and then this way we can just move on with the presentation. Does that is that okay with everyone? Okay, cool. All right. So uh, I'm gonna move on because we, we kind of have some uh, ground to cover. So my presentation is called Bridging the Gap Between Technology and Natural Healing. So as a chiropractor, uh, I practice what's called natural healing. My, 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 my primary mode of treatment of patients is spinal manipulative therapy. But sometimes that is just not enough. Uh, and as much as you know, the, the doctrine of chiropractic says just adjust the spine and then everything else will take care of itself, uh, it's kind of like the, uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, it says, just practice yoga and everything else will take care of itself. That is just not true. You know, sometimes you have to resort to other methods because the body is stuck in some kind of uh, lock-loop mechanism and it just won't recover, no matter what you do. So this is when we have to look at uh, adjunct modalities. And, you know, I've used the Skinner probably, well, many times a day, every day on many, many of my patients. Not all, but, but a good number of them. So, uh, there you go. Uh, the biggest challenge we have <coughs> in modern medicine and healing is pain. And, uh, uh, you know, and as much as mo most people will say, oh, no pain, no gain, you know, I'm of a different school of thought. I say, no pain, no pain. <laughs> and that just works better. <laughs> and, uh, so, but it's a big, big problem in America, especially, and I understand worldwide as well, because uh, the use of over-the-counter and prescription pain medication is skyrocketing, and, and we see a lot of tragedy. We see addiction, we see death, 
Uh, I had a case a few months ago. This guy came to see me, a medical doctor himself. By the time he came to see me, he was on eight Percocets a day, and they weren't working. And he was really suicidal. Okay, we fixed him. It took a little while, took about two months, but now he's back to work, back to normal, no more drugs. But uh, it's a big problem, and <clears throat> this is the way uh, we deal with, uh, most doctors deal with managing pain today, right? Uh, there's also side effects, and there you go. This is my general statement on how it's, how it's addressed in our society. So we're here to try and come together and hopefully change that trend. Uh, there are other challenges. I mean, just imagine the industry that's looking at us and saying, ah, well, what if they reduce the use of pain medication by, you know, say, let's be modest, 5% a year. Uh, that's, that's a big threat to a lot of industries. So we have a battle ahead of us, and as long as we stay united, uh, I think we have a very good chance of, uh, of making some positive impact. So uh, another one of my idols is Sir William Osler, uh, who said in his time, the person taking medicine has to recover twice. Once from the medicine, uh, once from the disease, and once from the medicine, of course. Uh, sometimes they don't recover from the medicine, uh, even as much as they may recover from the disease. So uh, these are challenges today in, in my chiropractic practice. So our goal is to get them off the drugs uh, into a healthier state of mind, and, and I find that very often uh, skin art therapy, in addition to what we do, uh, is uh, irreplaceable. Without that, they just won't recover. By the way, if you have any questions as we go along, please feel free to ask. I'll address them as, as I can. And if it's too complicated, we can uh, address them after. Yes? You mentioned that along with your chiropractor, how good is the therapy without chiropractor? Like if somebody is not doing manipulation? I have a, a good cohort of patients that come to see me just for Skinner. So, may I ask you something? Sure. Before you start answering the question, can you repeat the question? The question was, how good is skin art therapy without chiropractic work? Uh, so and my answer was, uh, it's, it's very, very effective. Uh, and I have a cohort of patients that just to see, come to see me just for skin art. Uh, we don't adjust them. There's no need for that. Uh, sometimes the problems are not chiropractic in nature. Uh, I'll show you in a little while. OK, so I'm going to present some interesting cases for you today. <clears throat> OK, uh, skin art, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that is a good question for Tamara. Yeah. Probably will. Yeah. Yes? I did send my uh, PowerPoint to her prior to this, so they should be. Anyway, if anybody wants my PowerPoint, just approach me. We can make sure you have it. Yeah? Okay. So uh, this is my, my first Skinner. It's a 97.4. Uh, does anyone have one of these? No? <laughs> okay, well, they, they're, they're probably go, they're, they're becoming antiques, but let me tell you something. It is an amazing, amazing machine. You know, I still have one. I, it's still, it's a tank. I've dropped it, you know, I've, I've left the battery in it for months. You can't, you can't break them. No, you can't. And they work. They really, really work. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, 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 when I travel, I always bring one with me, so I have one upstairs in my hotel room. No, you can't anymore, unfortunately. No, I'm never giving up mine. <laughs> so this was my first machine, um, you know, very good. And uh, I will tell you a story as to how I came about owning one. Uh, as everything in life happens for a reason, but it also happens as a fluke. Sometimes you think, oh, this is a coincidence. There's nothing like that. So when I first got this Skinner, um into my hands, I had no idea that, you know, 12 years later I would be talking to a group of peers and actually uh, presenting. So I'm very pleased. So this is the skin I use today in my clinic. Uh, so as you see, the design has changed. Uh, I think they probably tweaked some of the programs. Actually, I know they did because uh, this machine has probably five times uh, the capacity and the different uh, programs, uh, the different protocols that you could use. Honestly, you know, if I just told you, I probably use about, if 20% of the Skinner capacity in my 12 years, uh, it's probably an over-exaggeration, and it'll take me a lifetime to learn. 
uh, how to use all the features. So uh, there we go. Uh, we also use attachments. It comes with all kinds of attachments. Uh, I want to show you some of these if you're familiar with them. Um, let's see. That one is very nice, uh, the one with the probe. Uh, you can use it for acupuncture points. Uh, you can use it for all kinds of really nifty things. I'll present a case uh, uh, a little bit later, that one right here. Then the, the mushrooms, if you will. <laughs> That's what they're called. <laughs> uh, they work very well for uh, all kinds of different things. Uh, those I generally use with my scoliotic patients uh, when we need to cover large areas uh, of the body. And then, of course, the, uh, the attachment uh, with the little bit of uh, uh, probes. Great for scalp treatments, uh, all kinds of migraine syndromes, uh, that type of stuff. And the, uh, the, just an external electrode, uh, which most of the time uh, is used for self-treatment, because this way you can actually look at the screen and, you know, and, and use the electrode. So there are a few others. I have one that's not in this picture. It's a double electrode uh, for bilateral spinal. Uh, a stimulation, a very cool. So uh, that's the technology. So now, just getting back to what I do, you know, spinal manipulation, uh, I call it tricky business. Uh, you really need to understand anatomy, you really need to understand neurology, uh, and it, it's really not easy. Uh, you know, I consider it something like doing neurosurgery without the knife, uh, because, you know, one, you're dealing with very tiny areas, millimeters, one wrong move and the person can really, uh, can really have some adverse effects. So, uh, um, you know, and this, the nerves really are the strings of the brain. Uh, this is how the brain controls the, uh, the body, right? So, in a way, working with the spine is like, is like tuning a piano. You really need to uh, uh, tune all the keys because, you know, if, if C sharp is out of tune, you really can't play a concert no matter how good you are, right? But sometimes, even if your keys are all okay, some of the strings may not be in good order. So this is where Skinar comes in. It's kind of de-junking information, retraining the brain to uh, convey uh, proper information and communication from the brain to the body, because sometimes patients come up with uh, residual pain syndromes, and it's... Uh, Sometimes the pain stays there, the problem is gone, but the brain just keeps saying, oh, you know, let's get, generate that pain signal, uh, and that's when skinners come in uh, very, very effectively. So um, let's move on. We, we actually got a lot of stuff to cover here. Okay, uh, skinner effects are said to be analgesic. We all agree, yes, on that. They're said to be parabiotic. I always wonder what that meant, uh, <laughs> but uh, that I found that a reference somewhere. So it means that it actually makes life better for the cell. It's anti edematous uh, uh, it's great for edema, as you'll see in a moment, uh, anti-inflammatory, of course, it's all good. I mean, it really has all, all wonderful, wonderful effects on, on the system. The, the trick to choosing the right protocol, uh, in, in my mind and in my opinion, is really understanding what's going on with the patient, you know, not only, only on a global level, but also on a cellular level. Uh, and in Chinese medicine, uh, for example, they say, okay, too much heat in the liver. So cellularly, there may be too much heat or inflammation that could be not enough, you know, maybe cold. So sometimes you need to increase circulation or decrease circulation or, you know, stimulate the nerve or subdue a nerve. So this is when you start thinking about which protocol, bless you, uh, which protocol am I going to be using, okay? So uh, moving on. Uh, what is the appeal for us chiropractors to use Skinner as an adjunct? Uh, one of the appeals is rapid spot treatment. Sometimes it takes as little as 30 seconds to get an effect. You put somebody on a, you know, DX1, bring them to zero, it's 30 seconds, and you say, well, how does it feel? And the patient says, wow, I feel better. You know, it's almost like ophthalmology when, when you know, you sit there and the doctor puts, you know, lenses in front of you and they say, better or worse? And you say, oh, it's worse. And if they pick another better or worse, oh, better, right? <laughs> so really that's, that's one of the ways to use Skinner. It's a very intuitive instrument. And as much as I found that there are uh, some set protocols uh, that are already established for different conditions, uh, 
it really, it really is a gray area. You know, you really have to play with it. You really have to try and, and uh, sometimes figure out for yourself or let the Skinner decide, uh, at which it does very well uh, for you sometimes. So it does complement other clinical treatments. Uh, and in a way, for example, um, a lot of times chiropractors will use just traditional electric stim, uh, either before or after an adjustment or ultrasound. Uh, these things take time. Um, it, they, they take a minimum of 15 minutes, sometimes 30, where Skinner is, uh, uh, in my opinion, a lot more rapid. Although I've had cases where, you know, you'd be there for an hour working with a patient. You know, it really depends on what you find, what presentation you find, and what you decide uh, is your, your correct protocol is going to be. So we're also, uh, it has audible prompts. Uh, audible prompts are really more um, useful for things like self-treatment. Because if you can look at the screen and you're controlling the Skinner, you know, it's easy. But say you hurt yourself and you have neck pain in the back, how do you know? Right? So this is where audible prompts come in. So, so you have to listen to the Skinner, and when you hear the correct number of beeps or the correct kind of beep, you know that you're actually doing yourself, uh, you know, the correct treatment. Uh, there's measurable reliability of therapeutic effect. And I've seen this a lot, where a patient will come in, uh, they have very limited range of movement, for example, uh, and you actually do the Skinner uh, protocol or some type of therapy, Skinner therapy with them, and then immediately after, you can actually measure an improvement, uh, an increase in range of motion, decrease on the pain scale, although pain scale is a bit of a subjective phenomenon, but when you can measure range of movement, that's something real. Or, or for example, strength, a grip strength, that kind of stuff. And we see that, okay? Uh, there we go. So let's talk about, let's talk about, well, applications, chiropractic. My advice to doctors that just start with skin are, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. You know, just get in there, do it, work it, you know, try different things. But, but keep it as simple as possible for yourself. So try the simplest thing first. If it doesn't work, you know, think about, well, what am I doing wrong? Uh, go to the manuals, uh, talk to your peers, and you will come up with a, uh, a successful outcome. You know, there, I haven't had a case where, where skin or therapy has not been effective. Uh, I can tell you that. Okay, so what I do, uh, I, have, I run a center in Manhattan. Uh, it's about 5,000 square feet. And uh, we do all kinds of neat stuff there. Uh, we do primarily chiropractic. Uh, we do spinal decompressions, which is the DRX 9000 uh, for all kinds of uh, lumbar disc herniations, facet, facet problems, uh, stenosis, that kind of stuff. Uh, we do skinar, a lot of it, of course. Uh, we do thermography which is a, a really emerging field, uh, which I hope will replace mammography one day, uh, because there's been, if you follow uh, the British Journal of Medicine recently, uh, published a huge study, 25 years, uh, talking about how, how ineffective mammograms are, and there's no correlation between uh, survival and having mammograms. In fact, women that did have them actually have a higher risk uh, for breast cancer, but that's not where we're here today, so we're gonna stop the discussion on that right now. <laughs> Okay, uh, there's acupuncture, and uh, I actually work with an acupuncturist who uses Skinar to uh, treat the acupuncture points uh, as opposed to just using traditional needles. Uh, so that's, that's also another effective application. Um, we do all kinds of exercise, yoga, martial arts, meditation, nutrition, halotherapy, uh, which is uh, slowly coming to the U.S., which is dry salt therapy, uh, which is breathing in dry salt, very good for the lungs. Uh, again, that's not why we're here, but uh, if you're interested in learning more, just contact me. Okay? All right. So, uh, that's the DRX, what it looks like. Uh, it's a good machine. Uh, it's a more of a modern version of the medieval rack. Uh, it stretches you. We do get good confessions every now and then, <laughs> but it's, it, it's uh, yeah. So, uh, that's not where you are. So, these are some of the studies I'm going to pre present to you today. Um, but um, my personal journey with Skinner began about 12 years ago when um, I came to my office. I have a gym, so usually I like to do a little workout before I start my day. Uh, that particular morning, 
I was in a rush, I didn't warm up, and started doing pull-ups, and I tore my rhomboid. <laughs> Hurt like hell, and, and I felt it go, I felt it tear, I was really mad at myself. It swelled up, it hurt. So as I'm sitting there with ice uh, on my scapula and expecting, you know, six to eight weeks of recovery in hell, uh, I get a call from one of my friends who's a physician and he says, yeah, I got this guy in my office. Um, he's got this interesting device. You know, uh, I don't know what to make of it. Why don't you see him? So I say, okay, so in about an hour, uh, this gentleman comes in, uh, his name was Franz, he's from Austria, uh, I don't know if any of you know him, uh, he was a, you know Franz? Great guy, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I just saw him, he came to New York a, a couple of months ago, so it was nice to reconnect. And he showed me this device, which I showed you earlier, that little tank, uh, and uh, we're talking, and I didn't tell him anything. He was explaining to me about the waves and the, you know, the, the electromagnetic fields and everything like that. And uh, then he says, well, can I demonstrate it for you? He goes, do you have any pain anywhere? <laughs> I said, well, as a matter of fact, you know, I got a little stiffness in my scapula. So we go into a treatment room. I sit on, the, on my, one of my treatment tables. He's behind me. He turns on the skin. I got here the T, you know, and then he starts uh, doing something. He holds it for a while. And I'm thinking about it. Then he does a little bit of painting, uh, which now I, I know is called painting. <laughs> right. And then it took him about, I mean, less than 10 minutes or so. And then he looks at me and goes, how do you feel? And I'm feeling this and I'm saying, well, maybe it's a little better. In the back of my mind, I'm saying, well, maybe it's the placebo effect, you know, <laughs> which, <laughs> which does have, you know, we, placebo effect is a strong effect. It's about 50 to 55 percent. We all know that. So, and then we sit down and, and then I go, how much? <laughs> really? <laughs> all right, let me think about it. <laughs> So uh, he leaves, and uh, you know I go about my day, and then I wake up the next morning, and the most amazing thing happened. I wake up, and it's like like nothing ever happened. It was truly, truly remarkable. I found it hard to believe. So I, I go to the office, I pick up the phone, I say, Franz, you know you got to come back. I want this device. <laughs> so so ever since uh, I've been using the Skinner. Um, so subsequent to that. You know, he gave me a bit of a training. It was about two hours. Uh, then he had to go back to Austria. And then uh, a couple of months later, he calls me up, says, Dr. Ravenko is going to be lecturing in Austria. Back then it was Ravenko's uh, teaching uh, courses. So I flew to Vienna and uh, took a course with him, which really was a pleasure because um, he was lecturing in Russian. So while he was uh, lecturing and while the translator was uh, was translating, I had time to make notes, <laughs> which I found very useful. So uh, then uh, let's talk about some cases, okay? Uh, I'll try to keep it on off like that. So this case, interesting case, it was chronic low back pain of unknown etiology. This patient comes in, his name is Daniel. Uh, he came in with all kinds of x-rays, MRIs, uh, blood tests, everything. It was inconclusive. He was pretty much living on Advil for about a year. And uh, he had these serious spasms. No one could figure out what was going on. Uh, of course, being a chiropractor, I said, all right, let's try some chiropractic. Uh, about two weeks into just chiropractic work, because I was still kind of reluctant to use Skinner on everybody. I wasn't sure of myself, I guess, or, you know. <laughs> so uh, nothing happened. He was continuing to have the spasm. He still had to take medication. I said, well, you know what? There's this thing called Skinner. Let's try something. So within a week, uh, and his protocol was basically three lines, six points. Back then, it's pretty much all I knew. <laughs> so uh, we started working with him. Within about a week, he reported improvement. We were seeing him about three times a week for about a month. And then I'll never forget the horrified look on his face when I said, you know, you seem to be better. Let's reduce your treatment frequency to twice weekly. He was horrified. Okay. Uh, to make a long story short, uh, at this point, I see him about twice a year. Uh, he's fine, he's exercising, but it actually was Skinner. And at some point, we just stopped doing any manipulation with him and just continued with Skinner. So uh, that was a very good case. Um, any questions? OK, moving to the next case. This was a very interesting case. Uh, this woman, uh, about this short, 
but a, uh, an expert in uh, Aikido. Uh, she could throw a lot of people around. Uh, she had surgery. Um, she had a schwannoma removed from her brain. And uh, as a result of that, when they had, a, uh, had to uh, put an IV in her, they damaged uh, a nerve and, uh, and a tendon, and she developed uh, the corveins uh, and an aroma, uh, which rendered her pretty much incapable of work. She had to give up her work. She had to give up teaching swords, which was probably more heartbreaking for her than giving up work. And at some point, uh, she was referred to me by Dr. Brown, who's a psychiatrist, uh, but he's an avid, avid Skinner practitioner. Uh, he uses Skinner in his practice, so there's application in psychiatry as well, apparently. So, uh, but he's not in New York, so, but he was our psychiatrist for a certain time. She came to see me, said, uh, here you have this thing called Skinner. So this is one of the cases where it was totally non-chiropractic, and I said to her, well, there is no set protocol for this. Uh, you know, any treatment we do is, would be purely experimental. And, you know, you have to make this disclosure to your patients because Skinner is only approved in the U.S. for uh, pain management and biofeedback. Uh, I don't do biofeedback, uh, but you have to tell your patients, you know, if it's pain, yeah, but I don't know if it's going to resolve your other issues. Uh, amazingly enough, uh, her deeper veins recovered, uh, post-MRIs uh, did not show any deeper veins, and her neuroma disappeared. Uh, it took about two months, and she was coming to see me about three times a week. Now, mind you, generally what we do, I mean, this, this protocol was just very local, but most patients initially are going to get, uh, you know, the bee sting just to introduce the Skinner signal to them. That's across the board. Then everybody is going to get some energetic cleaning. Everybody is going to get three lines, six points, uh, and then we decide on on, on other treatment that's more appropriate. But first, you know, you treat the patient globally. You know, never treat just the, the, the symptom. Treat the patient. That's, that's, really, that's really the philosophy that we try to follow. So uh, <clears throat> uh, next case, uh, Andrew. This was a very cool case. Uh, um, actually, a friend of Midas, also they, they trained together. Big guy, uh, also in Aikido. Um, chiropractic patient from a number of years. Uh, one day he came in and said, after I was treating him, I said, so uh, anything else? He goes, you know, I got this, this hamstring uh, tendon pain. It just hurts my butt. You know, it's been going on for a long time. I said, why didn't you mention it? And he said, well, I didn't know if it was your thing because it's not spine. I said, let me take a look at it. And it was a case of tendinosis which can actually be very, very uh, troublesome sometimes because tendinosis doesn't tend to recover very well uh, because it's a flailing of the tendons. It's, it's, it's also a vascular issue. Uh, we treated him with this protocol, uh, if anybody's familiar with that. Uh, one time, just once, and he came back uh, you know, a few days later saying, you're a genius, I'm back to normal, I can stretch, great. <laughs> so now every patient's going to, you know, is going to respond differently, of course. Uh, but our job is to generally try and elicit, you know, the healing. I had a conversation with a friend of mine some time ago. He's a really cool guy. He's from India. Uh, he teaches yoga, Ayurveda, and he's also a Sanskrit scholar. So sometimes we have discourse about, you know, healing, you know, patients. And and he put it in a very eloquent way. He said. Our job is not to force the healing onto a patient, but to try and awaken the healing from within them. You know, so that's, that's really the principle of what we do. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. So when do you decide to use Skinner? So if you have many patients, what are the, the reasons? Or okay. Yeah, uh, I would use Skinner for this patient. Excellent what question. Excellent question. As I said, primarily I'm a chiropractor. Oh, when do I decide to use Skinner? Uh, do I use it for this patient and not for that one? Uh, primarily I'm a chiropractor, so that's always first, okay? If it's anything spinal, if it's anything extra spinal, that's, that's a flag for me that maybe we should try Skinner therapy, okay? Or when my traditional methods fail. And we give them a reasonable amount of time, at least two weeks of conservative management. Uh, and if they don't respond, uh, then we'll say, okay, maybe we're missing something. Maybe the, the nervous system needs a little extra boost. 
Because it's really, it's really the brain and the nervous system that heal things. It's not us. You know, I had a professor <coughs> in grad school, Dr. Di Giacomo, really good guy, you know, uh, a lot of clinical pearls. But uh, I remember the first day in grad school, there's about 120 of us, out comes this very, you know, distinguished looking gentleman uh, who's been a chiropractor for years and years. And he looks at us over, and this first lecture, and he says, all of you think you're going to graduate and become great healers. And then he gave us some statistics. He said, only 60% of you will graduate. And he said, all of you who are married, 50% uh, of you are going to not be married by the time they graduate, which was all really true statistics. And then he said, and you think you're going to go out there and cure the sick. And I'm standing like this. And he said, let me tell you something. He goes, there's only one thing that you can cure. And we're like, what? <laughs> and he goes, that's a ham for Christmas. Nature cures the rest. <laughs> so, true story. <laughs> so, I'm trying to convey this to you because, you know, it's really the patient that does all the work. It's the inner doctor. So, our, our job is to use the Skinner to really kind of push this inner doctor. Come on, let's do, let's do your job already, you know. Uh, uh, Jeffrey, an interesting guy, came in with a tennis elbow, classic case, and I said to him, did you try uh, the different things, you know, anti-inflammatories, whatever, you know, the, uh, the, the strap, um, the tennis elbow strap. He says, I did. And I said, so well, what prompted this visit? And he says, well, this morning when I reached out for my coffee, my milk carton to put in my coffee, I dropped the carton because it hurt too much. You know, he says, can you do something for me? So uh, this was a pure Skinner therapy case. Uh, we used this protocol, very simple. And uh, he recovered fully within three weeks, which is really remarkable for a tennis elbow condition because they can be very, very persistent. I've seen patients with, huh? I've seen patients suffer for longer than three months, you know, longer than three months, sometimes eight months to a year, okay? So, and with conservative treatment. So, uh, Skinner is great for something like this. Um, okay. Uh, John. This was a very cool case. Uh, this guy was an ex-Marine, uh, very interesting guy. He worked on the SpaceX program uh, for a while, uh, sleeps four hours a day, has a big brain, <laughs> came to see me and uh, for some uh, spinal pain, some headaches. And uh, when we treated him, uh, he said, well, doc, you know, I got this Achilles tendonitis. Uh, I can't run anymore. I've been going to uh, physical therapy for six months. I still can't run anything you can think of. So this was in the early days of my skin. I was uh, probably the first six months that I had it in my hands. I was really excited and I said, hmm, there's this thing called skin. Let me treat you. Uh, so I treated him uh, once. He came back two days later saying, you're a genius. Can I buy one of those? Uh, subsequently, I gave him Francis' number. Uh, he bought himself a skinner, then he got his father a skinner, <laughs> so, and uh, he fully recovered. I love cases like this, you know, this is a very good case. A uh, very conservative and simple protocol. Um, yes? Uh, the, the normal practice, yeah, most, most Excuse me? In, in a normal practice, yes? Well, you know, so that is... Oh, <laughs> I see. Okay, you know, I touch patients all day long and I absorb their energy. Um, but, you know, I've done many years of meditation and, and yoga and that kind of stuff, so I, I clean it. I, kind of, I really don't absorb the energy anymore. It just goes right through me and out the window. Uh, you know. Yes, yes, I do. So, and meditate. So, uh, it helps. Oh. A skin art treatment? I only treat myself like if I get injured. That's it. If, there's, if, the, if there are no issues, then I don't treat myself. You know, it's not something you do for fun. Uh, although, I wonder if some people do. <laughs> okay. So, um, this was an interesting case. Um, I'm not going to talk 
too much about it. This guy came in from South America. His name is George. And uh, he had a, a shoulder surgery. And he's sitting in my uh, office in one of the treatment rooms. And uh, I say, well, what's, you know, what shall we do with your shoulder? And he looks at me and says, that's not what I'm here for. And I said, well, what are you here for? And he goes, I have Parkinsonism. And he's a young guy. He's in his uh, early 50s. And I said, well, I don't treat Parkinsonism. Uh, and he says, no, no, I have a skinner. I've been to Russia. I've been to Dr. Ivenko. And he came up with this whole protocol, uh, all written up. And he said, can you just please do this? So I did uh, <laughs> for a few sessions while he was in New York. And that actually helped. He, he, he went to Italy, came back, said, you know, I, I walked all over the place. I felt great. You know, thank you. And then he went back to South America, where he's from. So uh, interesting case. So as you see, it's many, many different applications that you could think of. Um, <clears throat> all right, this was another very interesting case. Friday night. Uh, and you know, you always hope that you don't have an emergency walking into your office on a Friday night in the city. Why? Because none of the hospitals, all the doctors are gone. Uh, it's, it's, it's very hard to get them in. And uh, then you have to stay extra hours. And, <laughs> you know, and it's hard to find management. I could tell you a few stories about, you know, Friday night emergencies. This was one of them. Uh, the guy comes in, acute gout. His toe is swollen. He can't walk. Um, and I look at him and I say, so did you have lots of lobster and beer last night? He goes, how'd you know? <laughs> so uh, that, that gave me a clue that it was actually gout. And uh, so I said, look, you know, it's going to be tough to get you anyone right now. You're going to probably need colchicine. Um, you know, icing these things doesn't really work. Heating these things doesn't really work. Nothing really works. I said, all right, let's, let's skin our, we did. And he actually, he, you know, the swelling went down, the redness went down. He walked out of my office without pain after five minutes of just very, very basic skin or therapy. And I said to him, you know, you really should follow up with your primary care, you know, Monday as soon as possible, get some blood tests, you know, you're probably going to need some medication. Yeah, 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 thank you. Disappeared. Three months later, comes to my office, you know, with a little bit of neck pain. We treated him, and I said, I look at my notes. Oh, by the way. Did you ever follow up on that? He goes, no. He goes, I was fine after that. Go figure, right? <laughs> so these are all true cases. So what I'm saying is it's very exciting to see the family of, uh, yeah? Excuse me, what means DX1? DX1, VAR? Oh, uh, diagnostic one setting in, uh, in the Skinner? Diagnostic one, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, it's very exciting to see a family of, of skin art practitioners grow. You know, it, it really, really is nice. So, oh, this is a couple of really cool cases, and then we'll probably call it a day. Uh, this was a, a medical doctor who came to see me, a psychiatrist. Uh, she had a facelift, and uh, <laughs> right, and uh, six weeks later, she's still having swelling. Uh, numbness in the teeth. Uh, she has paresis of the of the left uh, eyebrow. She came oh, like classic case, and and her surgeon said, well, I don't know what to do with you. So, so uh, this was a case of, uh, you know, she and she, this is one case. Like you said, she came specifically uh, for skin art therapy. Uh, she is a friend of Dr. Brown's, uh, who was also a psychiatrist, and he said, well, you gotta go see him. So uh, this was the protocol. Uh, very, 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 uh, very basic. Uh, B sting, six points, cranial, uh, DX1 uh, to zero. Uh, she's still in treatment. This has now been probably about three weeks, and she's about 80% better. Uh, she, she's draining. Her features are becoming more normal. Uh, she has control of her eyebrow, and, and the teeth are no longer numb. Okay? So, uh, yeah, let's move on. Um, Plantar fasciitis, another guy, uh, he's a uh, sommelier, uh, works in, uh, on his feet all day long uh, in this very fancy restaurant. Uh, calls me up one day, says, Doc, I can't walk. You know, I'm, I'm in pain. So very, very, very simple protocol. Uh, took about three weeks, <coughs> bilateral plantar fasciitis. So we worked on both feet, uh, and, and he recovered. Wrote us a really nice review online. <laughs> so. Uh, and the next case will be 
Cervical brain. This was a very tough case. This was a guy uh, with radiating pain down his right arm, uh, neck pain. Nothing really remarkable on his MRIs, uh, and but we see that a lot. You know, sometimes they look at a set of MRIs and it's like well, I don't see anything, and the patient's disabled. And sometimes you look at a set of MRIs and you're like, how is this person walking? Uh, and they're like, well, I'm okay, just a little stiffness, you know, here and there. So as I said, never treat the films, treat the patient. Uh, this was a very interesting case. I tried everything, you know, skinar, uh, chiropractic, traditional physiotherapy, nothing worked until I called Dr. Ivenko and I said, uh, can you help me out? He's the only one I knew back then that actually did this. And he said, have you tried opposite side treatment? And I said, no. He said, try doing the same thing you're doing just on the, on the good side. I did, and that was, that was magic. Result. So the brain works in mysterious ways, you know. Yeah. How do you see the role of Skinner in the subluxation theory? Because this subluxation of the chiropractic. So. Well, I find that Skinner actually helps them, uh, you know, not have subluxations anymore. So you know, we remove subluxation, uh, use Skinner, and the subluxation, you know, doesn't doesn't come back. In a way, it's not really that great for my business, but you know, I still use it. <laughs> Okay, so that was a very interesting case uh, of, you know, uh, so you have to really sometimes think about what is going on with the patient and sometimes really think outside the box. Okay, that's, that's what I'm trying to share with you here. Very interesting case. Uh, this was a case of TMJ and lingual, unilateral lingual nerve paresis. This patient had a dental procedure and uh, subsequent to that, she developed severe pain in, in the temporomandibular joint which was not, uh, most of the problem was that she lost control uh, uh, in half of her tongue, the right side of her tongue, and loss of taste, uh, and that was very disconcerting. And, you know, about two months after the surgery, you know, her dentist says, well, I don't know, you know, and she's like, maybe you damaged my nerve, uh, <laughs> which she did. Uh, so, and she came to see me specifically for Skinar, uh, very, very, very interesting case. Uh, this is where we use the that little intraoral probe, uh, and we work directly on her tongue. We work directly on her inner muscles, on the pterygoid, on the TMJ from the inside. Uh, we did some chiropractic work because she kept getting a subluxation at C1, C2, uh, and uh, she actually recovered. But it took us about four months to for her to regain full control and full, uh, uh, full sense of taste. Uh, so that was a very good case. Mm, let's see, what, what else we got for you? Uh, Paul, uh, this is a pretty straightforward case, uh, a completely torn supraspinatus. Uh, the patient is in the 60s, decided not to have surgery. Um, he, he knew about Skinner, uh, came in, we, we just worked on the Skinner, very basic Galena paint at uh, that, that frequency. And he regained full mobility, he's out of pain. Uh, you know, I don't think he'll be able to do some things like play tennis on a competitive level, but it's really a quality of life issue for a patient like that. Uh, he's asymptomatic, so, you know, because all his doctors said, oh, we should have surgery, so no surgery. Uh, scoliosis, uh, it's a girl that I started seeing when she was 13. Uh, she's now 17. Her curve is about 20% reduced. Uh, this is a ca complicated case of chiropractic, and this is when we use the, those mushroom electrodes. There are some protocols that we followed um, uh, for that to just rebalance the different you know, uh, points of the spine. Interesting case. We'll see how it goes. Uh, her parents are happy, uh, and she's pretty fully functional. Her chest excursion is normal. She's not in pain, so we're just following it and you know, continuing treating her. And uh, this is, uh, yes? Both, yeah, both. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this was a good case. This is early on, acute low back pain, uh, lumbar disc herniation. This was a case where I felt um, was going to surgery and because uh, the patient was in excruciating pain. Uh, he had weakness in the leg. Uh, I had the surgeon waiting in the ER, uh, but he had to go to get an MRI uh, before he went to the ER. So the radiologist calls me and says, this guy has got a huge disc, you know, it looks extruded. Um, 
you know, so I'm like, great, give them the film, send them to Mount Sinai. Uh, the surgeon's waiting in the AR, and then the radiologist says, the patient wants to talk to you. So I get on the phone, and the patient says, Doc, you know, something happened during the MRI. I felt something click. I feel a little better. Can we hold off on the surgery? I said, well, all right, how's your foot? Can you move it? He goes, yeah. So I said, all right, let's just go conservative. Uh, you know, then he came back uh, the same day, and we started on the DRX treatment, on the lumbar decompression and skinar therapy. And I'm going to show you some uh, interesting MRIs. Uh, this is a before and after. Uh, this is the before, of course, you can appreciate right there. You have a really large disc herniation, nasty. Uh, okay, uh, can you see that over there on that side? And then after the DRX and Skinar, uh, three months uh, post MRI, I sent him to the same radiologist. He calls me and says, isn't that the guy you sent me with that huge disc? And I say, yeah, he goes, where is the extrusion? I said, I don't know, it's gone. He goes, well, I find it hard to believe, but you know, stranger things have happened. So uh, that's another interesting case study. So I think we're pretty much done. I think we're in overtime. Cool facts. Uh, I, was do I was always doing some reading. There's so much stuff about microcurrents, and I found this at Rutgers University about why microcurrents work or how they work, and it's called jump proton conduction. Apparently water, uh, has memory, and if you've ever followed any of the work by Dr. Emoto, uh, Masaru Emoto, uh, the hidden messages in water, uh, wonderful stuff. So we're finding out things that we never suspected possible, you know. But this is how it works. If you put a microcurrent, then you put it through the water that has a memory of not being correct. I don't know really how it works, but apparently so. But then it actually causes the collagen to, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the universal, yeah, exactly. And then it causes the collagen to actually bind together in a, in a normal way. Just, just a cool fact. All right, so uh, just to, to wrap up, uh, just reimbursement for skin therapy. For those of you who can take insurance, uh, there's a few codes uh, that you can use. Uh, you know, traditionally, these are 97032, G0283, G0295. These are all physical therapy codes. Um, reimbursement varies from state to state, from insurance company to insurance company. Uh, you know, we bill out probably $100 for a treatment. Uh, um, anything more than 20 minutes, we bill 200. Uh, we have a good, a good reimbursement rate. Biofeedback, I don't really use that code um, as a chiropractor, but you can. Yes? So you get reimbursed even if you see a patient, like I say, three or four times a week? Yeah. Of course, if they have coverage, yeah, they reimburse us. It depends on their policy. I mean, if there's a, if there's a coverage in the policy, but these are for, for insurance reimbursement. And, you know, neuromuscular re-education uh, is another code. Um, okay, so you could use those uh, depend on, depending on where you are and what type of insurance networks you're in. Uh, but that, I, think, I think that's useful information. So, uh, in summary, Skina restores the 3G effect, good humor on many levels, good sleep and good appetite. And if you have those, you're a healthy person, okay? And uh, well, other pain management, uh, you might find this interesting. You could always ask your patient this. <laughs> you know, you ever try just enjoying your pains? Uh, some people do, uh, there's no cure for that. <laughs> and uh, I just wanna say to you, I, I think that, uh, you know, every chiropractor, every doctor should really have a skinner as part of their doctor's bag. Uh, and that is my presentation for today.